and we're going to talk about enzymes. Enzymes are very important in biological systems. In each of the cells in your body, you've got a ton of chemical reactions taking place. Now, most of those chemical reactions would take place very, very slowly, it's too slow to support life if it weren't for the fact that enzymes are present. Enzymes are protein catalysts. At least most of them are protein catalysts. They're all biological catalysts. Most are proteins. Now what a catalyst does is speed the rate of a chemical reaction. In that process, the catalyst isn't used up. It helps a reaction take place, and it's available to help another reaction take place. So today we're going to take a look at enzymes. And so uh, in your cells, okay, we've got these chemical reactions taking place where we've got our reactants producing our products. Now in that process, we're breaking the chemical bonds in our reactants and reforming bonds in our products. So the atoms present in our reactants are present in our products. We've just rearranged those atoms. Now if we take a look at the energy associated with a chemical reaction, and we'll use the term free energy, actually Gibbs free energy. Okay, G. Okay, Gibbs free energy is the energy that's available to do work. Okay, so if we look at the progress of a chemical reaction, okay, from our reactants to our products, okay, there is free energy associated with the system in the reactants and in the products. So let's say in this chemical reaction, our reactants have that amount of free energy in them. And then our products have this amount of free energy in them. And so there is less free energy in our products than there was in our reactants. As we go from the free energy in our reactants and products, we've got a change in free energy, or delta G. This is triangle here is the Greek letter delta. In science, it's often used to represent um, a change in something. So this is a change in free energy. So here we had more free energy in our reactants than we've got in our products. This type of reaction is an exergonic reaction. Okay. Remember our first law of thermodynamics states that energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can change form. So if we've got less free energy in our products than we had in our reactants, that energy had to go somewhere. This type of chemical reaction, an exergonic chemical reaction, releases energy. On the other hand, if we ended up with more free energy in our products than we had in our initial reactants, delta G would be positive, and we would have an endergonic reaction. In an endergonic reaction, again, we can't create or destroy energy. So if our products have more free energy in them than our initial reactants, that energy had to come from somewhere. It came from the surroundings. Okay, so back to our reaction that we've got here. Okay, here we've got the free energy in our reactants. Here we've got the free energy in our products. Now we need to get from here to here. In that process, we're going to break the chemical bonds that are found in our 
reactants and form the chemical bonds that are found in our products. That point at which we're breaking chemical bonds here and forming chemical bonds here is called the transition state. Now in order to reach that transition state, that's going to require some energy. It requires energy to break bonds. That energy makes this graph go something like this before it comes down like this. Okay, so we needed to invest this amount of energy in order to reach that transition state. Okay, this is the energy of activation or the activation energy. Okay. Now, because we've got this activation energy, Reactions, even though they may be spontaneous and favorable, okay, take place slowly because that energy of activation must be overcome. Okay, what an enzyme does is it lowers this energy of activation. If we had an enzyme present, we might drop that energy of activation down to something more like this. As a result, the chemical reaction takes place at a faster rate. Okay, that's the way enzymes work. Now, if we take a look at enzymes at the molecular level, okay, there's sort of a globular uh, sh three-dimensional shape that any uh, protein, for example, might have. It's got this area where this work is done called the active site. So the active site is where the reactants go and we reach that transition state. The reactants in an enzyme catalyzed reaction, we'll say this is our reactant. It's just a single molecule. Okay, The reactant in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction is called a substrate. Okay, This is our enzyme. Okay, the substrate enters the active site. That causes a conformational shift in the enzyme, a slight change in the shape, which strains the bonds in our substrate. Okay. When that happens, we end up with our products. Okay. So at a molecular level, enzymes function by taking substrates into the active site straining the chemical bonds in those substrates, helping it reach the transition state, and producing our products. Okay, so it brings the substrates in close proximity to one another and strains the bonds. Okay, in this particular example, I've just shown one substrate. If I had multiple reactants, they would enter that active site uh, and produce our products. Now, enzymes are said to be substrate specific. Okay, what that means is that enzymes typically catalyze one particular chemical reaction. If I've got a different substrate, it doesn't fit into that active site appropriately, and it doesn't catalyze this particular chemical reaction. Okay, so the active site is appropriately shaped for the substrates that the enzyme catalyzes the reaction for. Now, 
this becomes pretty important with some chemicals in the environment. Okay. Inhibitors of enzymes may be able to enter that active site. If they enter that active site but aren't the substrate, that prevents the substrate from getting into the active site. Okay, that's called competitive inhibition. Okay. When some other molecule than the appropriate substrate enters the active site, preventing the substrate from getting in. Okay, some pesticides function by doing that to enzymes within the nervous system, for example. Um, we can also have a type of inhibition called non-competitive. In non-competitive inhibition, we've got a molecule that binds to the enzyme away from the active site. As a result, it changes the shape of the enzyme, essentially making that active site dysfunctional. So, enzymes, biological catalysts that help facilitate life by speeding chemical reactions.